so far we have looked at structs which allow you to pack multiple different data types or multiple instances of a given data type into one related structured record right and the type def is just a way of sort of abstracting that out and giving it a easier to use name and making the programming or the coding in general a little bit cleaner there is another use case of something called an overlapping record for which the keyword in c is union right and in order to understand what we mean by overlapping uh, records or overlapping data what we need to understand is a variable at the end of the day is just some data that's stored in memory right so if i have the memory map corresponding to my computer like this and i pick out one particular element which is let's say four bytes in size if i just look at the memory as such i cannot tell whether what is over there is an int or a float a single precision floating point number or an array of four characters or an array of two shots all of these could perfectly well have been present in this location right and that is effectively where a union type sort of comes in in some sense what it allows you to do is to say that you will take this some chunk of memory give it multiple different names and thereby be able to access it in different ways right now we have come across this already in the past it's basically called type casting right type casting what it would allow you to do is to take the address of this particular location in memory change the type of that address change the pointer type from an int to a float pointer for example right cast it as from an int pointer to a float pointer and then dereferences it dereference it as a float star right a union does something very similar but in a much sort of cleaner syntactic way right so let's take a look at an example of that okay so here we have the an example of the definition of a union and what you can see is it looks very similar to a struct right what i've got is this keyword union followed by a name right by the way this term foo is something that you are likely to come across very often when reading about programming languages it's just some historical sort of insider joke from the people who used to work on a lot of programming languages to start with for want of a better name they would use variable names like foo and bar they sort of started out with that and you know those things just stuck right so it's something that you are likely to come across in many uh, different you know not probably not books but at least online references to various programming languages so i'm also using that over here as one of the names right and what we have over here is in other words is i have foo one you could call it dummy one it doesn't really matter i'm just using it as an example out here and now i've declared two fields inside it right once again just like a struct it has two fields int x int y and it is i've declared a particular variable with the name a which has this value uh, which uh, which has the type union foo one okay i could have used a type def union foo one blah 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 etc i'm not doing that you know that works exactly the same as for a struct pretty much does what you would expect right now the question is what is the difference between a union and a struct because they seem to have exactly the same thing right i have multiple fields the thing about a union is this int x and int y are actually point are exactly the same thing right how you can see that is i assign a value to a dot x and what i get when i print a dot x and a dot y is let's you know comment the rest of the things out first so that we can just concentrate on one part when we run this we find that a dot x is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and a dot y is also 1 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 i did not initialize a dot y i did not assign anything to it right and yet i get the result exactly the same right so what happened i declared a union and what it said was that i had two fields in here both of them are actually the same field so why would i even bother right 
and of course when you just have two integers it doesn't really make sense to you know have uh, both of them as having the same field right in fact there's a way of sort of checking that they are exactly the same field right let's try and take a look at that what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to take the addresses of these two ampersand a dot x and ampersand a dot y and see what happens when i print these out right you can see that they are exactly the same address right they are not just sort of I, I didn't take a value over here and copy it into both of these locations x and y they are literally pointing to the same place okay so you might wonder why would i do something of this sort okay let's look at another example then right let's comment this one out and go for another example where i declare another union right And now what I'm going to do is I've declared foo2 with x which is an integer and y which is a short. So there are different data types, right? What happens when I run this? I find that it prints out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 for the int, but only 5, 6, 7, 8 for the short, right? What happened out here? Let's take a look at the addresses of these things, right? And the addresses show you that b.x and b.y have the same address. So now we can start to understand what's actually going on, right? This value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 effectively tells us that because we are on a little endian machine, the value 1, 2 goes to the highest address, right? That is basically the this address d8 plus 3, right? 3, 4 goes to d8 plus 2, 5, 6 goes to d8 plus 1, and 7, 8 goes to the value actually d8, right? This address d8, right? Which is why when I try interpreting this, the data present over there as a single short value, right? What ends up happening is that it actually picks up just the 7, 8 and the 5, 6, right? Of course, in reverse order, converts them back in you know, using the little Indian format. So now I have 5, 6, 7, 8, and that is what comes out when I actually print out the value of b dot y, right? And it comes out as 5, 6, 7, 8 as the result of b dot y. It's even more interesting what happens if I tried assigning a value to b dot y, right? I can imagine that what would end up happening is actually putting some new values into those two memory locations, right? The ones that corresponded to the first two locations of the integer, right? Which means that when I try reading back the integer, I might expect to see that the value has actually changed, right? And yes, you can see that the value changed to 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, D. B dot Y is just A, B, C, D. The reason why you see these F, 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 F over here is, think about it, two's complement, right? The most significant bit A, B, C, D is declared as type short, the number is found to be negative because the most significant bit was a 1. When it tries printing it out, it automatically sign extends to a 32-bit value because the percent hash %x over here is expecting to see a 32-bit integer and so on, right? That's all there is to it. So you can ignore this FFFF out here, but the more interesting thing is by assigning something to y, I was able to change the entire value of the integer as well, right? We can actually take that a step further, right? And where that gets interesting is instead of having a short, I can also say that, you know, I am going to have a string of four characters out here, right? What happens when I run this? It Now, notice that I use the string copy out here, right? To copy the string hola into the C dot C which is a character array present inside C, right? And what it says over here is that, you know, I can actually print it out, hola is this and so on. You might have noticed, and so what's actually happening out here, right? You look at this, it printed out the string. It has also printed out something in hexadecimal. 
And if you look carefully, you will realize that this is ASCII code. 48 corresponds to the ASCII code for capital H. 6F corresponds to the ASCII code for uh, O, right? 6C corresponds to the ASCII code for the letter L and 61 corresponds to the ASCII code corresponding to the letter small a. So that is what has happened. Once again, the little endian format is the reason why it has ended up being looking backwards, right? But by assigning something into the string, I ended up getting back something in, the, in an integer. I can do it both ways, of course. One more thing that you might notice over here is that, you know, this gave you a warning, right? Uh, one is uh, one part of the warning is that you implicitly declared the function string copy, right? And uh, yes, I have not hash included the appropriate library for that, but that's okay. It sort of figures it out, at least in this case. Ideally, you should not have such warnings in your code. What is more important is it also says that string copy here will always overflow. Why is that? The destination buffer has only four bytes in it, right? C has been declared as a four byte buffer. but Hola is actually a string of length 5. Remember, it needs a null byte at the end in order to indicate the end of the string. Right? So, if I say, okay, fine, you know, let me be a bit more careful and actually print it out as 0, right? Now, what happens when I run this? You will find that, yes, it prints HOL. I have the H, I have 6F, 6C, and that's it, it stopped. And if you think about it, it didn't just stop. What actually happened was the most significant byte over there in that integer is 0, 0. It has to be so that it's a null terminated string, right? So this is one possible use case where you might find that, you know, having two different views of the same data can be useful and you can get that using a union. Another sort of interesting use case, which you know, you know that uh, we have already discussed uh, how floating point numbers have a somewhat complicated representation, right? We take 32 bits, that, but then we sort of partition it out. One bit goes for the sign bit, eight bits goes for the exponent, 23 bits goes for the mantissa. So a number which looks like 3.14159 over here may not really have the same kind of representation internally, right? it will have some kind of binary representation. How to get that binary representation out? There are ways by which you can basically do, you know, the float star, dereference, etc., etc. A union is another nice way of doing exactly the same thing. What I have de defined over here is, I have defined a union of an int with a float. And what it tells me is that if I access it as d dot y, I can assign a float value to it. But if I now try accessing the same value as d dot x, it literally takes out those bits treats them as an integer and tells me what the value is. And if I run this, I can see that it actually prints out the floating point value of y, but also this complicated hex representation out here, right, which if you break it up and disassemble it, you will find actually corresponds exactly to the binary representation of this number 3.14159, right, to whatever degree of accuracy can be stored inside the computer. So this is basically one way by which I can sort of have different views of the same data.